Well, Dave, we're here at the workbench, and you know, every week we get to talk about rigs and techniques, and we talk about new products later on in the show, but what are we gonna talk about tonight? Well, you know, springtime is bass time. You know, we got some big bass moving around, you know, depending on the water temperature, they can be in all stages of the spawn, coming, going, staying, doing it. Right. Uh, so, you know, a good slow bait is a good way to catch a big fish, and it's a good way to catch one on the bed, and it's a good one to get, way to catch them when they're off the bed. So a uh, big Texas rigged soft plastic bait is a really good bait. Um, let's, let's show them how to rig that Texas bit, rig first, you know. You're going to use a, a wide gap hook. Right, you know? this is the RSB, the Bass Assassin RSB, and the key to this, as you've told me, yep. is that this part of the tail needs to be facing up. Up or flat, either way, when actually it's, flat. When it's uh, finely rigged, yeah. right? Put it up on there and put it, it back It goes in. around. Go after you tie on, you want to make sure you go over your... Your knot. Your knot, so that, guess what? So it becomes more weedless. Right. And then you just bury your worm hook into there. Well, and that's really good because it's, you know, it's weedless. Even though in the springtime, there's not as many weeds, still you can fish that in, a, in real heavy cover still. Uh, you know, you can throw it up in the grass. You can throw it, you know, you can, if you got the patience to let a big bait like that sink, you can, you know, fish it in deep water and even let it sink real slow. Now, you know, the thing of it is, is it's very adaptive, but, and very versatile, but there's really two different styles. There's the non-action, which is, you know, maybe a Cinco, which is, I, I, if I want to turn, if I don't have any Cinco's, I just turn my RSB into a Cinco really quick by just clipping just the tail off. The tail <laughs> I just off, right. bite it off. But this is what, what I would consider a non-action bait. And either that or a And big, would you rig this Texas rig? Still Same rig it style. Texas style, but I would use a really heavier weight, especially if I was in deep water, because I'd want that thing to go straight down. I'm not, because it doesn't have any little appendages or anything on it. This is like this a would, big bait like correct. this. This would be another example with the with the uh, with the claw with the crawl here. This this is this is a crawl that doesn't have a whole lot of appendages on it. It's just got the two. So, you know, some of them have all kinds of little freaky little things all over them. And, and those, those you want them to go down slow, but the big, the bigger ones, the ones that don't have a whole lot of appendages, we want those to bullet down fast Oop. because they're not really doing much on the sink, you know, because they, they don't have a whole lot of little things that are flicking right. around. Right. Now, if you put the big weights on there, you'll get that, you'll get your big worm, your big Cinco down on the bottom into that strike zone really quickly. And not only that, that big weight is, is a, it makes you feel connected to the bait. You will feel all your bites a lot better. That heavier, that heavier weight. Uh, How big a bait weight is this, Dave? You have I think it's idea? a three quarters. Three quarters. I mean, you, you mean, you can go to a half ounce, half, you know, half, if you're in 40 quarters, feet of water, yeah, yeah. you know, you, you got, you'll you learn a lot of patience trying to let a, 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 flirty, a fluttery worm sink in 40 feet of water. It'd you're crazy. You'd, you'd, be, you'd take a long time. But with those, with those action baits, those ones with all the little, the little fluttery doodads, you don't want to put a big weight on there, right. you know, because you want it to sink and flutter as it falls, you know, and fall slowly, you know, maybe in 10 feet or 15 feet of water and then, and just let it sl sink slow. You still it takes a long time for that to happen as well. But you know, as it sinks down there, it gets hit a lot of times on the fall and you know, the other ones don't. And it's really good to use, you know, a nice little uh, weight keeper to keep your weights close to the bait and keep you connected unless, you don't want to keep your, your weight on there because you, you got to remember that weight is always going to beat your bait to the bottom first. So if you're in deep water and you know you want, to, you want it to get down there, but you want your bait to settle in after the weight, you just, you just peg your bait, your weight a little further away you know, from, from your bait. And then that allows the bait to also elevate off of the bottom. Right. And you can also, you know, instead of just using a weight, you know, you can also use little the little spike weights to put in them and you can use <coughs> hooks that are a different size now we have mag the magworm hook which is a lot thicker than the the uh, wg here the emg the emg, EMG. has a, the emg has a very light wire compared to the to the magworm right and that big heavy wire can actually Axes act as a weight. good weight for you. Got so it. if you've got a bait that's not sinking fast enough and you don't want to stick something in it or make it even too heavy to make it sink faster, go to a heavier hook. You know, the heavier hook will make that thing sink faster. 
my problem has always been bass fishing where I didn't feel like I was in touch with the bottom. Yeah. I never treated it like it was a, a, a saltwater jig. Right. You know what I mean? Right. That's so important. Good yeah. job. No I worries. learned a lot. Thank you so much, Dave.